it's Michelle and today I've got for you a Pilates workout on the reformer. So we're going to work out our whole body. We're going to hit a little bit of everything. Um, so let's just get right to it. So we're going to start with uh, some leg and footwork. Okay, so set your uh, machine up for how you need that personally for your height. Okay, and then put on your desired springs. Uh, I'm going to do two and a half, so two reds and a blue. Uh, you're welcome to go heavier or lighter than that depending on your goals for today, okay? So start lying on your back. You can have your headrest up or down, whatever's more comfortable. I'm gonna put my straps on the floor just so they don't make too much noise. And then come on down. So place your feet up onto the foot bar and you can just kind of have your heels comfortably on for now. So before we start pressing out, we're just gonna kind of settle into our body a little bit, okay? So take one hand place it on your belly, take your other hand and place it on your sternum. And then we're just going to take a couple focused breaths together to kind of get into our workout for the day. So breathe in through your nose, take a nice full inhale, and then just exhale out through your mouth. Yeah, if that breath pattern works for you, stick with it. If a different one feels better, you continue. As long as you're taking big breaths in each direction, that's what matters. Yeah, so just kind of feeling the gentle rise and fall of your chest and your belly under your hands. Yeah, and then almost pretend like you've got a set of hands in the same spots, but on the back of your body and see if you can breathe into those as well. Yes, we're breathing up and down, top and bottom. And then let's move to one more spot. So just take your hands on the sides of your rib cage and now see if you can add that side to side direction to the breath we've found. So kind of expanding into your palms and then feel that deflation away. Yeah, take one or two more breaths, trying to breathe in all those directions that we felt all at the same time. Last big breath here. All right, so when in doubt, come back to this breath while we're in our practice, okay? It's always there for you if you need it. So next, take your hands uh, either on your hips or just down on the mat and do a few pelvic rocks. So just kind of take your tailbone and rock it forward and back, forward and back. Yeah, so just getting your low back moving, tipping your pelvis. Yeah, you don't have to worry too much about your legs, just really right at that junction where your low back meets your pelvis. Yes? Okay, so now while we're doing our footwork, we're going to be in neutral, so with your tailbone tipped away slightly and a little bit of space underneath your lower back. All right? So now that we've kind of found our breath, found our pelvic placement, let's put it to work. All right, so now take the balls of your feet to the foot bar, bring your heels in to meet, so you're in a little V with your heels high. So now open your collarbones, take a big breath in like we practiced, and then as you exhale, you're gonna extend the legs, connect the inner thighs together, and then come down to the bottom, yeah? So the goal would be to have kind of an even tempo with the press out, and with the return. So you're getting that kind of equal uh, force in both directions. Yeah, so see if you can kind of find that. The speed is totally up to you. If you wanna go a little slower today or if you want to kind of power through it, you decide. Okay, so your heels are gonna to try to stay in that elevated place in space, right where they're at, so they don't get any higher <clears throat> or any lower. Yes, let's do this about three more times. That pelvis should be able to stay in that stable neutral the whole time. Feel your ribs heavy down. Now come in about halfway and hold. Take a breath in. Now as you exhale, start to find some nice little pulses. So we're pulsing down at the bottom of our range of motion. So you're dropping as close towards your heels with your sits bones as you can without losing that nice curve in your lower spine. We'll do three more, two, and then push all the way out. Find that long squeeze one last time, and then come down to the bottom. <clears throat> Very nice. All right, let's go uh, parallel. Bring your legs all the way tight together. You can separate a little bit if all the way together doesn't feel good. 
So wrap your toes around the bar, drop your heels towards the springs so your Achilles tendon is in a lengthened position. Now feel that connection of the legs squeezing in side by side, and then you're gonna press out away, keeping the heels down, and then return. Yes, so we get kind of double action. The wrapping of the toes helps the muscles under the arch of the feet to really be working. And then this low heel position gives us a nice stretch and opening through the ankles and the caps. Yes, so you should be able to keep your heels again kind of in the same spot. So you'll get more stretch on the way down. Yes, they shouldn't have to change. Good, feel those glutes on the sides of your hips connect as your legs get long. Good, let's do that three more times. Last two, really curl those toes. And last one. Good. All right, let's move to our heels. Leave your legs together if that's how they are. Bring your heels up to the bar and then keep that inner thigh connection as you push away and then as you return. Yeah, and the soles of your feet should just be angled as if they were standing on the wall across from you. Yeah, so however you'd want your weight distributed on your feet as if you were standing, that's how we kind of want it to be now, even though there's no floor underneath them. So we wouldn't want all our weight on our pinky toes, right, if we were standing. So same thing, try to kind of even it out. Last two. Now this time, push out and stay. Now we're gonna pulse at the top end of our range of motion. So different than last time, bend your knees in about a third of the way and then push back out long. Come in a little bit and out, in and out. So now the emphasis is more on the front of the legs, getting to that long line, yes? Now we're not hyperextending, we're just pushing to that spot of being straight but not quite locking out the knee joint. Now let's go even faster for five, four, three, two, one, and then come all the way down to the bottom. Awesome, all right, leave the legs together. Go to the balls of your feet, high half toe in parallel, and now push out from here, pause with your legs long, drop your heels under the bar without disconnecting the inseam of your legs, lift your heels back high, and then come down, yeah? Do that again. So I like to think of like a zipper that runs from the very, very top of my legs all the way to the heels. You don't want any of the teeth of your zipper like peeling apart, right? Those broken zippers that some of the teeth are funky. So we don't want that. We want a nice, closed, tight connection <clears throat> from top to bottom. Yes? Especially when the heels go beneath the bar, that's a spot where we tend to see a little bit of disconnect if it's gonna happen. So think of intensifying the work from the glutes on the stretch. Very good. All right, now push out and stay and do a couple extra calf raises all by themselves. Yeah, just kind of see your maximum depth, maximum lift without losing that squeeze. <clears throat> all right. So good, now lift your heels up and just take a little extra stretch for one heel at a time. Very good, so passing through those high heels and then letting the springs pull that one heel even further. Yeah, and you can go a little quicker through this or you can slow down and find the stretch. My calves are feeling pretty tight, so I'm going with the slow option of kind of staying in that stretch a little longer. <clears throat> All right, now lift your heels high and come all the way down to the bottom. All right, we're just gonna do one last position here. So we're gonna go back to our heels, open to a wide second position, turned out to 45 degrees, okay? So not as wide as your knees can go, hold back a little bit, so they're about the width of the shoulder blocks apart, okay? So here we go. <clears throat> Heavy for through the ribs, and then we press away and return. Yeah, so the feet are out wider. You might find you can sink a little bit deeper into that hip and knee bend while keeping your tail down. Just kind of see how this feels. <clears throat> this is the widest we've gone so far with our feet. Good, you can feel a little bit of energy like pulling out on the bar with your heels to kind of light up the sides of your legs. Let's do three more. <clears throat> Last two. Now, on your last one, come down and stay, and let's do another set of those short range, low pulses. 
So pushing out about halfway and then dropping down. Good, now you might be able to get a little bit lower, especially since we were on our toes for the last one of these, right? Let's do four more, three, two, one. Push all the way out to straight and then come down to the bottom. Ooh, very nice, you guys. So bring your knees off to one side, help yourself up, and then we just need to adjust our springs a little bit. So remove one of your springs. Uh, I'm gonna take off my lighter spring, so I'm left with my two heavier ones. You decide what you wanna do. You can do heavier or less, uh, and then lay back down, and we're gonna do some single leg presses, okay? So come on to your back. Let's start on our heels. So put one heel on the bar in line with your sitting bone and then lift your other leg up and send it forward over the foot bar. Okay, so now this is challenging to hold the leg straight. If it's too much, bring it to tabletop. So we're still in our neutral. Take a exhale to get ready. So we're gonna breathe out to prepare on this one. And then we're gonna inhale to push out from the foot bar and then return. Yeah, and these breath patterns are always just a suggestion if that feels good to you and helps you connect to the movement. If not, just breathe naturally. Good, so now this reaching leg should have lots of energy. I like to flex the foot to really find that connection to the thigh. Good, let's do three more, sinking down nice and low. Two, now we're gonna stay down and do a set of pulses here. So get low, sits bone to heel, pulse for six, five, four, three, two, and then push all the way out to straight one last time, and then come to the bottom. So good. All right, let's do your other heel. So new heel on, other leg reaches out. Exhale to connect to those abdominals, feel centered, and then we'll push out when we're ready. Inhale, and then return. Yeah, again, trying to even out the timing of the out and the in, hopefully. Very good, so flexing the foot is also working the muscles right on the front of the shin. Yes, let's do that a few more times. Last two, last one. Now come down and hold, and we'll take another little set of pulses up and down. Emphasis on the down, down, down. Three, two, one, and then push all the way out to finish, and then bring yourself down. Whew, it's amazing. All right, so now we're gonna go on our toes rather than our heels. So pick a leg. <clears throat> You're gonna go on the ball of your foot in that high half toe position. So high half toe isn't the highest you can lift your heel. That's kind of a hard place to be. It's also not as low as you can go. It's somewhere in the middle, okay? So take your one leg up, reach it forward just like we did before. But now this foot can be pointed if that feels good to you. So now exhale to get ready, feel the ribs heavy. Now as you breathe in, you're gonna push away and you're gonna tabletop your free leg and then you're gonna reverse that motion. Let's do that again. So now kind of a bicycle action in the leg. So there's a lot more movement going on. So a lot more things to contend with here, yeah? So feel the hips nice and heavy. Try not to be hiking them up as your legs move. Now pause at the top and hold. Reach your leg up to the ceiling, that free leg. Now just tap and lift that leg a few times. So the bottom heel stays high. <sighs> Find nice and st stable through the pelvis. Now pause at the top. I want you to flex both feet. The bottom one will drop under the bar and then lift when the top one points. So going together, flex and press. Two more times. <sighs> now pause at the top, bend your knee, and then come through that bicycle to come down. Good, okay, so we kind of learned all the positions of this next exercise. We're gonna do the développé exercise. So it's basically one of each of those in a row. Okay, so let's give it a try. So we already learned it basically. We're just gonna do one of each of those movements. So we exhale to get ready. I inhale to push out and reach my leg up. Now exhale, tap and lift the foot from the bar, flex and point both ankles, and then bend the top knee and bicycle down. See, I told you we already learned it, and I'll do it again. Tabletop up, tap and lift, flex and point, and then bicycle back through. 
Good, two more times. Bicycle to reach, tap the bar, flex and point, bend and lower. One last time, Whew. bottom calf is feeling it. Tap and lift, flex and point, and then bicycle through. Oh, good, okay, shake that bottom foot out. And now let's do the other side. So new toes on, reach out, exhale to prepare, inhale to bicycle, and then return. Yes, so the hips and the knees are the main movers. That ankle is stable. Last two. Okay, now we're gonna practice each of these elements that build on each other. So with that top leg long, we tap and lift. The less you feel the carriage moving under you, the better. Yes, last one. Now leave it up at the top and move through the ankles. Keep long on the bottom thigh, connect to the glute on the back side. Two more. Last one, bend the knee to tabletop and bicycle it down. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. So now put it all together, one of each. Here we go, it's a lot of coordination. So be gentle with yourself and just let's practice. So we get out to long legs, we tap and lift, we flex and point, bend the knee and bicycle through. Good, bend to stretch, tap and lift, flex and point, tabletop and bicycle. So good, two more times. Down and up, lower and lift, in and down. Last one, yes. Now I won't, I won't tell you how to do it this one. You know how to do it, just breeze through it. Okay, good, Whew. All right, shake your legs out. That was amazing, all right. So come on up off your back. If your straps were on the floor like mine, put them up on your shoulder rests because we're gonna need them for a little mid-back series. So pick your springs that you'd like for that. I'm gonna do a heavy and a medium. You can do more or less if you would like, okay? So I've got a red and a blue spring left on, and then let's come back down. Yes, and you can choose where you'd like to have your headrest up or down to support your neck a little bit, okay? So now you're gonna grab your straps from behind you, reach your arms up to the ceiling, tabletop your leg in legs in either neutral or in imprint. All right, now squeeze the knees tight together. Whew. And then when you're ready, we're just gonna start doing some straight arm pull downs. Yeah, so if you can be neutral, let's be there. Yeah, if you need the support of rounding your low back a little bit, then you go for it. Okay, so again, finding that consistent pressure into the straps in both directions. All right, now when you're ready, as those arms lower, you can nod the chin and flex the spine up and off the mat, and then lay back down. Yeah, do that a few more times. Exhale, inhale to lower. So nodding the chin before the head even leaves the machine. So you really set that skull up forward and let the abs do more than the neck. Yeah, do a few more. It's okay for your neck to work, but getting the head whew, tipping forward is gonna make that work all together a little bit better. Now on your next one, hold up there and stay. Start pumping your hands and take a little set of hundreds. So you're gonna breathe in as you pump the hands for five. Breathe out as you pump the hands for five. Good, now keep going with this. You're welcome to set your head back down and you still get an awesome workout. Okay, so you decide. And you can even really have nice kind of subtle taps so we're not letting the carriage shake under us too much. Now continue, if you'd like, maybe straighten one leg and see if you can hold it for a set or two and then bring it back and then try the other side. Just getting a little endurance on that long leg. Okay, last two sets, maybe straighten both legs. See if you can hold them there for a second and then lay your body all the way down. Whew. Very nice. Okay, I don't know if that was 100. I never count quite to 100, but that was good enough. That was enough, that's for sure. All right, so now arms up to the ceiling and we're gonna do some arm circles. So we'll start the same way of the arms pressing down by our hips. Now flip your palms to face you, open them to a T and then raise them up to the ceiling. Yeah, press forward, flip to open and then up. 
So now we're taking our arms away from our center. So it gets a lot easier for our ribs to kind of pop away from the mat. Yeah, so just feel a gentle little connection between your bottom ribs and the mat behind you. Okay, now we'll do a few more here. Things we could add on would be our head and shoulders flexing forward and or our legs extending both together and then we lay down. Yeah, it's up to you. It's like a potluck. Go through and take what you want, leave what you don't. One more time. And then lay down and pause. Now let's reverse and go the other way. So arms go to a T first. Make sure the hands don't go beneath the height of your shoulders. Pull the palms to your hip bones, flip to the floor, and then raise the arms up. Open, pull, and lift. Yeah, once you kind of get all the positions, try to smooth it into some nice continuous circles. All right, now if we're adding on some of our extra things, the head can flex as the arms are pulling to our sides and the legs can straighten at that same time. Yes, so try them all, see what sticks. Pick your favorite version for today. Let's do two more. So good, last time. And then lay yourself down and relax. Oh, so good. All right, you can kind of open your arms, stretch out your chest a little bit. Okay, so one last thing. That was last, one last thing before we come up. So now bend your elbows and we'll do some tricep presses here. So get your forearms about to 90 degrees. Uh, elbows down is a little more supportive. Elbows off is a little more challenge for the shoulder and elbow, okay? So pick elbows up or down and then start pressing those fists forward and back, yeah? You can go palms facing the floor or you can even twist and have your pinky finger lead you down so it's more of a hammer curl. Either one, pick what kind of targets that tricep better for you. All right, so now we're gonna add on to this and do a little coordination exercise. So when my arms get straight, I'm gonna flex forward, reach my legs along. Now I'm gonna open and close my legs one time, out and in, keep my shoulders up and bend my knees, and then flex my elbows and lay back down. So that's why it's called coordination. It's a little tricky, okay? So we do everything goes together at the start. We beat the ankles out and in, legs first, head and arms second. Good, do that a few more times. In and down. Now, if you'd like, some things we can add here is three beats of the legs. The other thing we can add is the head never going down. So those are some good choices, in, in, in. Knees, so then it would just be elbows, no head. Let's do two more times, taking whatever version you would like. Last one. And then come all the way down. Oh, so good. All right, hang your straps up on the shoulder rests. Roll over to come on up. Whew. All right, awesome. Okay, so we are gonna go to a blue spring. That's what I'm gonna choose, so a little bit lighter, okay? So we're gonna sit uh, kind of mermaid style on your carriage. If you wanna boost up on something like a platform extender or a yoga block to make this more comfortable, you can. So my leg that's closest to the shoulder rests, that uh, shin is gonna go up against, okay? Other foot forward. Now this back foot, I don't know if you can see it, I like to flex it and kind of hook my foot tight around this back shoulder rest just to give me a little bit more security so I don't feel like I'm gonna tip over in a second, okay? So you can do that if you would like. Now take the front strap, thread it on your closest elbow, and then take your fingertips behind your head. You could also do hands in front if you prefer. All right, now sit up tall. If your hands are on the back, press your head into those fingertips. Now we're gonna take a side bend. Now this is why that hooked foot on the shoulder rest is kind of nice. It's like a little extra security so you don't feel like you're gonna tip into the springs, okay? So exhale, that bottom elbow drops towards the springs and then I inhale and come up, okay? Now it is totally fine if your back hip comes off the mat a little bit. No worries, 
you know, not majorly. We don't want it to come up too much. That would send our weight a little too far that way, yeah? But a little bit is okay. So let's do that one more time. And then come up, okay. So now, at the top, we're also gonna go towards the pulleys, towards the shoulder rests. So we start here with the rope a little slack, so we get a bigger range of motion to go up and over towards the springs. Get tall to come through center, and then let that rope relax. Yes, so it's a stretch, but also strength. Yes, because we're pushing against the springs. Good, do that one more time. Feel that nice even length on one side and then on the other side. Very good. All right, now come up tall, elbows stay wide. We're gonna rotate towards the foot bar and then come back. Ooh, that's not easy in this sitting position. Yeah, we twist and then we return. Yeah, if this mermaid position is uncomfortable, you can sit cross-legged, you can take the shin that's against the shoulder rests, and that leg can hang off the front of the carriage if that feels better to you. Okay, one more time. So that peck and shoulder and obliques working, and then come back. Whew. Very nice. All right, now let that strap come down into your hand. This other hand can rest on the corner of the carriage right behind your hip. Okay, so now reach this arm out to the side. Oh, and I'm gonna do one more thing. I, just for me, for my settings, I'm gonna turn my long loop into a short loop on the mirror with you if you have the same. Um, if you have two loops on your straps, just hold the shorter one. It'll give you a little bit better range here, okay? Optional, but just so you know. So now we're gonna keep the arm to the side and just do a little side arm bicep curl, yeah? So see how high you can keep that elbow in space. Try not to lean away. Just keep your nice posture, yes? All right, now when the hand comes up next to your cheek, we're also gonna side bend. So I'm gonna soften my other elbow, go into that movement we found before, right? Side bending towards the springs, and then I come up and reach. Good, so it's the same movement through the spine, but now we have more going on in that top arm. Okay, now you're welcome to stay with this, or we're gonna add one more little addition. So this hand becomes really important. When we side bend, I'm gonna post up on that arm, lift my hips off the mat, reverse it, sit back down, and then return. Good, all right, try that a few more times. And then lower, yes. So the hips travel off the carriage, they press forward and open, and then lower back down. All right, let's do that one last time. Up and around, and then come back down. Whew. Amazing. All right, let's do that all on the other side, okay? So if you doubled up your loop, you can put it back to long, hang it up, and then we'll flip around. Okay, so now your new shin is gonna go against the shoulder blocks. You shouldn't be sitting on your feet. They should be free out from underneath you. All right, now put the strap up on your elbow. Pick if you want the hands front or back of the head. And then here we go. Oh, you can see the foot better on this side. So flex the ankle and push the top of the arch into the shoulder block. Feels very secure. Now as we side bend, Keep the length through the spine and then come up tall. Yeah, so it's working this whole top side, even down through the hip to keep us stable. And then inhale up, so good. So that waistline gets the work in both directions. All right, now let's start to increase the range of motion. So now once we come up tall, you're gonna laterally flex over towards the shoulder rests catch the tension back on the rope, and then go to the springs. Yes, and it's okay. So for me, I've got most of my hip, or most of my weight on that one hip. It's totally fine, yeah? Just get in a comfortable sit position. Make sure you don't feel like you're gonna fall off the carriage. Hook the toes. All right, okay, take your one last stretch to the shoulder rests. Now come up tall. Keep your shoulders strong so they hold their shape and then we twist from the abdominals and then come back. And it might not be your biggest twist ever, that's okay. This is a tough base to twist off of. 
Yes, open that free elbow nice and wide. Last two. And then last one. Ah, oh, so good. All right, now if you would like, double up your loop or just grab the smaller one. Yes, if that option is available to you. It'll just keep you from hitting your stopper so soon. So other hand goes to the back corner of your carriage, elbow high, and then we pull and reach. So a side arm bicep curl. Very good. So as upright as you can be, it might not be a perfectly tall spine because of how we've got our legs. Yes, you can be crisscross or you can have this other leg hanging off the front of the carriage. Yeah, I know this mermaid position isn't comfortable for everyone. So now we're going to utilize this back hand, lean our weight into it and side bend and then reverse the action to come up. Do that again. Exhale and then inhale, return. Amazing. Let's do a couple more. And then if and when you're ready, we'll add that elevation of the hips. Okay. So the next time, here we go. We use our back arm, squeeze the glutes, press and open the front of the hips, and then lower down. Yeah, we get this awesome stretch through the front of the legs as we're working through the body. Good. Let's do two more. Think chin away from your chest. Nice and long spine. Last one. And then release down. Oh, so, so good. All right. Awesome. So take your straps. I'm going to put mine back on the floor just so they're not dangling around. You can leave yours if you want, if you would like. So we are going to, so I'm going to change my spring to a red instead of a blue. So it's going a little heavier now. Okay. So we're going to kneel down, put your feet back against your shoulder rests, wrap your hands around the foot bar. All right. So if possible, put your thumbs on top with the rest of your fingers. Now we're just going to push the carriage out enough so that I can get my back relatively flat with my hip over my knee. Okay. We're looking for kind of a 90 degree angle here. Now we're going to leave our lower body how it is and just bend the elbows. So your face will come over the foot bar and then you'll push back away. Yeah. So it's constant little adjustments going on right around that hip to keep the shape. Okay. So if you lose it a little bit, it's all good. Just refine it. Good. So the lower body stabilizing upper body is the mover for us. Yeah. Draw the ribs gently up away from the floor. Feel your spine nice and neutral. All right, now just bring your knees in, drop your chest and take a little stretch here. All right, now you can repeat what we just did or we're gonna advance it by bringing our knees off of the carriage, okay? Let's give it a try. So hover your knees, sit your weight back over your heels, okay? And your knees come a pretty fair distance away from the mat. Now, bend your knees, or bend your knees, they're already bent. Bend your elbows and straighten your elbows, okay? Good, now if your knees are too close to the carriage, it's not gonna work and they'll just slam back down. So you want your hips to get up pretty high and then get your back long. So your face isn't as close to the foot bar this time. Last two, and it might not be a perfect 90 degree angle this time either, on the hip. Now bend your elbows and come all the way down. Ooh, how's that? Not easy, right? Okay, lovely. So next, we're gonna go back to trying something on our knees and then we'll try it off of our knees. So we're gonna go and go with that pattern, okay? So you always have the choice to do the knee down version again. So now this time, my carriage is fully in. We're gonna sit our weight back over the heels and just hover. So there's a little space between my sits bones and my feet, okay? My arms are nice and strong. Now we're just gonna do some knee stretches. So your hips and your shoulders, the joints don't move. Your knees go back and then your knees come in, yes? So my shoulders and my pelvis stay where they are. That's it. Perfect. So take some nice deep breaths here. The faster you go, the harder it is to keep all those stabilizing parts still, like the shoulders and the hips. Three, 
two, one, and then come in and rest. Okay, now we know what's coming next. We're gonna try that without our knees on. Oh, let's do it. So again, you don't want the knees super close. <laughs> That's really hard. So you wanna pick the hips up and then sit back, almost like a cheetah getting ready to pounce. So you're high up. Now, once you're there, feel nice and strong over your legs. And now we push till the legs get straight and then we come in. So again, wherever you set your upper body up, it's gonna stay and the legs move out from under you. Yes. Now, if you wanna go faster, you can. In and out. In, don't get stuck at the end. Try to come right back in. Three, two, one, and then set your knees down and relax. Ha! Huh. Amazing. Okay, now we're gonna put those two together. So we'll do it once with the knees down, once with the knees up. Got it? All right, so we bend our elbows. We bend our knees. My knees are down. It's okay for the carriage to start in this time. The hips can be a little extra flex to start with. Now, I'm gonna push with my legs and my arms. Ready? So, my hips extend. As I push with my arms, I get to this big Superman position, and then elbows, knees, and hips flex to come back. Push, and then pull. So start a little slow until you get all the mechanics. There's a lot of body parts moving. Now again, you don't wanna get stuck with the hips forward. So you wanna be really kind of buoyant. As soon as the hips get open, they're already flexing to come back. For three, pull it in, emphasis on the return. Two, last one, and then come on up. Oh, amazing. Okay, now we get to do it with our knees up, which is so fun. Here we go. All right, so get up high with your hips. Bend the knees, draw the ribs up. Start with the elbows bent, which is hard. You have to get a little lower. Now I push out and straighten arms and legs and then bend everything in. Push and then pull, amazing. Woo, might not be the biggest bend of your arms ever. That's okay. Find how you can make it work on your body. Three more. Two. One. And then relax down. Oh, amazing. Oh, okay, good. So nice. Even if you just tried those, I'm proud of you. <laughs> and we can perfect them the more we do it, okay? All right, we are gonna finish with a stretch and then we're gonna call it a day, okay? So you can actually stay back how you were with your feet up against the shoulder rests. Now take one foot up onto the foot bar. You can leave your one red spring on. Now if this feels like way too much, either lower your foot bar or just place your foot on the platform, okay? You'll still get an amazing stretch. Now come up tall, light touch with the hands on the bar. Now think more about your back leg than your front leg. Feel like that foot is driving the carriage back. Squeeze that back glute and then reverse and come up. Yeah, we do that again. Push away and then return. Yeah, so see if you can kind of evenly distribute the stretch between the two legs rather than like getting your front leg all the way straight and having your back one super bent, yeah? So see if you can think of those feet going in opposition. All right, do that one last time. Now bring your body up. Raise your opposite arm as the foot you have on the bar. Find your balance. Now get tall through your chest, look up the wall more and more and more till you kind of see where the ceiling meets the wall and just take a really gentle kind of lengthening of your upper back just as much as you feel comfortable with and then come down awesome okay let's do the other side so bring your new foot up other foot back get pretty tall feel your abs support you here and then think back leg moves first to find that stretch. And then up. Yeah, if you wanna think of when you're breathing, you can exhale in the stretch. 
and then inhale up. Good. Two more times. Last one. Look down at the springs. Let the weight of your head pull you down. All right, now opposite arm as your forward leg lifts. Drop that front hip. Now get taller as if you could touch the ceiling and then take a small upper back extension. All right, thank you so much for joining me for today's workout. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Uh, please comment down below if you have any feedback or ideas for future videos. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and pass this along to a friend uh, so they can enjoy it too. Okay, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.